to do battle out on track for this the uh, next round in the gt4 european series which continues here from here and uh, heads off uh, to the uh, next rounds nurburgring and uh, mizano nurburgring as part of the adac gt masters and mizano as part of the uh, blanc pan sprint series on the formation lap already then alongside me very good morning, David Addison. Morning, Dave Richardson. With your happy Father's Day in the corner of the comms booth. That's lovely to see. Not a happy sight, though, is this Corvette that ain't no. going anywhere, I'm afraid. This is Yellow Beelan at the wheel, and he doesn't get away. And that's a big, heavy lump of American iron to give a big old push to. But thankfully, the car has now got going, but he's going to have to start at the back of the grid. So he's away. It is, as Dave was saying, a 50-minute race plus one. That mandatory pit stops. Yellow Beelan then does the first stint. Uh, in 69, the V8 racing Chevrolet. And as you can see, the circuit's very slippery indeed this morning. It's not that we've had a huge amount of overnight rain, but an awful lot of fog about two hours ago. That's thankfully lifted. As it has done so, it has given witness to a very greasy circuit, and that's going to be a real drama for the first few laps. As we drove into the circuit a couple of hours ago from our hotel, you were, you were actually quite concerned because the fog was very thick, wasn't it? And yeah. I mean, it's not so much as big a drama for these sorts of cars compared to single-seaters because of these things have lines. Yeah. And really, the, the situation is that Marshall's post have got to be able to see the next one. Well, that, as you can see from the shot here at Le Combe, is not a problem at all. So we are good to go. And some of the cars, just to make the point, have two drivers. Some have one that's permissible under the regulations. Uh, one, incidentally, that has gone from two to one. The recession, you know, it hits. <laughs> it's gone down. Uh, is the Allied Racing BMW 28, because Dietmar Lackinger should have been driving with Jan Kasperlik, but Jan Kasperlik uh, was uh, taken ill yesterday, only did a couple of laps. Uh, the car should be 11th on the grid, but uh, he sent a text message to the organisers at 6.34 this morning saying, I don't feel very well, can my oh, co-driver right. go solo? And that's the deal. So Lackinger will go on his own, though Jan Kasperlik. Kasperlik is missing. There is the uh, starting order then on the uh, screen for you as the cars are continuing on their formation lap and you know, various parts of the circuit. And because this is quite a long lap here at Spa, some parts of the track surface will be different to others, won't they? Uh, absolutely right, yes. Uh, bits will dry quicker than others, and the traction levels for the first few laps, whoever's at the front is going to be the pioneer. They're going to be finding the grip levels on every lap. The locals that you talk to and ask about the weather say, it's going to be like this all day. Not too much rain, right. but a bit grey, a bit unpredictable, but there's not much rain forecast, but don't expect to get a suntan at Spa today. However, as far as the GT4 European Series contingent, sponsored this year by Competition 102, as far as they're concerned, they just want to survive for the first few laps. Mm. Rear-wheel drive cars, big, powerful cars, spectacular cars. It's going to be very lively indeed. Now, one to watch, I think, for the first... A uh, few laps is going to be the Tolman Motorsports Ginetta starting third. David Patterson, who is a regular in uh, British Ginetta racing, mm. is uh, going to be the start driver. Uh, and then Luke Davenport takes over. Now, Luke knows his way around here because he's done GT4 races here in the past. He's raced Ginettas here in the past in the UK-based series. Uh, that could be a car to watch. Pole position, Sandor Van Es, very experienced Dutch driver, and he shares with Duncan Hausman, part of the uh, legendary Hausman racing family. Mm. And uh, Duncan, perhaps overshadowed a bit by brother Patrick, Patrick. Mm. who was Mr. Porsche Supercup for many years, but actually you don't see much of Patrick these days, and Duncan House in a touring car, particularly in a BMW, uh, is uh, very, very hard to beat. He's in the Chevrolet Camaro, he will do the second stint. He's had one race win this year, and with them at the front of the grid uh, is a car that's going to be worth keeping an eye to, because it's started by Bernhard van Oranje, the Dutch prince, but it's a car that yesterday had a diff problem and mm. didn't take part in Q2. At uh, the time was done, but then it started belching out smoke from the diff and it uh, didn't do Q2. So assuming that the car is well, it should be one worth watching. So it's going to be Bernhard van Oranje in the Ecris Motorsport car. He will go first. There it is. Look on the outside of the front row. They weave their way up now towards the chicane. They get themselves in this two-by-two -two Noah's Ark-style formation. There's another BMW behind on the second row of the grid, the sister car, another of the Ecris cars, Simon Knapp starts. Now, Simon Knapp is a 
very experienced, a very quick driver. So against the, relatively speaking, ham opposition, he should be one to watch here. Certainly, I remember him in GT Masters and uh, actually has raced in uh, various other categories uh, as well. As the lights go green, we're away and uh, racing. So very scrappy start. Even the pole man Sandor Van Es was in comparison to Bernhard Van Oranje, who gets it all crossed up, coming down to the last source. And whatever advantage he pulled on the way into the corner, he's lost pretty much by going sideways. Simon Knapp, meantime, runs wide. Very nearly had to pay to get back into the circuit there, so why did he go? He's back on track now, but he's down in sixth spot as they head down towards Eau Rouge for the first time. So it's Van Oranje in the lead, Sandor Van Es second, David Pattison is third in the Ginetta, and then in fourth place, and a big, big spin. That's Thomas Krebs getting oh. it all wrong, and thankfully the Howell missed him. Simon Clapp, I think, was the one that came across him really having to take evasive action in the BMW. Is he surviving the experience? Yes, he is. But Simon Knapp right now has got one colossal laundry bill. <laughs> the Van S uh, car was so, so squirming when the accelerator yep. went down. I mean, these, these really are damp conditions. OK, it is the uh, opening lap, and uh, things will change, I'm sure. But uh, that was a scary moment, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, Simon, no. Simon Knapp's eyes were up like Chapel hat as he saw that car come across the road. He survived the experience, but you can see how much ground he's lost as a consequence of all yes. of that. Can't hear the engine. All he can hear is his heart rate at the moment, but he's got a place back. Look on the inside, heading down through Brussels. Oh, it's great to watch this, because in modern motor racing, you don't find rear-wheel drive cars going sideways, because it wastes time, but this is how it used to be. Yes. And the nice thing about the GT4 series is that you have this mix of what effectively are sports car shapes but also what you could argue is a touring car shape like the bmw m3 that's a kind of interchangeable car and then you've got the big camaro there that's yellow vila who did start at the back of the grid and vila now working his way up through the pecking order and of course what's crucial for vila he sits at the top of the points at the moment the uh, gt4 pro class he's on 122 points so as you your v barn is uh, p2 in the points so of course vila wants to do is, is is get as far up the order as he can uh, to protect his position in the uh, in the points. Quick word about you at V-Barn, because he was involved oh. in this enormous accident at the end of race two at the Red Bull Ring. Now, uh, that means that his Aston Martin is currently in four plastic bags. He's there yes. for a BMW for this weekend. He didn't qualify it that well because he doesn't know the car that well. But V-Barn, importantly, is here, and he's in a position to score points. The little Chevron there scuttles its way out of the court Paul Frere 44, which is Marcus Clutton on the wheel. Very quick driver out of UK Club Racing, but he's being monstered there by the BMW and by the Corvette the uh, Camaro rather, and it's through the twiddly bits where the Chevron run by Redline Racing, Simon Leonard's team is going to be good. It's absolutely dwarfed, isn't it, though, by the Chevrolet? It is. The, you know, the, the actual physical presence of that yeah. uh, Chevrolet, you know, when you're sitting in that little car, you're going to think, whoa. It's like coming up alongside a truck on the motorway, yeah, isn't it? It's and then behind you've got the uh, KTM crossbow and the Sind as well factored into the race. So the end of that one, over the timing line, comes the Dutch Prince. Bernhard van Oranje's car, turning his way then now through the right-hander at uh, La Source. So the gap from P1 to P2 as they cross the timing line, just a second. Right at the back of the pack is a uh, command. Wait the uh, cars up, they squirm their way through and uh, top of uh, the Rouge and now onto this very, very long straight. And all of a sudden, that he is being reeled in this uh, big, mighty, muscly Chevrolet weaving from side to side to try and find a way past. Here's a replay of the start, and as you say, it was a bit scrappy, David. It was because the BMW was. A long way gone on the run up towards the first corner. But then got sideways, started to lose ground, and everyone scrambled through the corner. So as they made their way down, then this a replay of the start. That was when that uh, big Chevrolet, you could just see as the power was being put on. The back end stepping out just a little bit. And there it, it, there it was again. But that was a very, very frightening moment indeed. As the number 18 car, Howe, well, 
how that was avoided. Remarkable. Absolutely right. So Thomas Krabs had that big, big moment. Got away with it. And there, up front, is the BMW number one still sliding its way through. Now, I think uh, Van Orange here is uh, feeling the pressure a bit, looking a bit, bit skittish, isn't he? He's is, um, being pushed hard by Van S. Last time over the uh, timing line, it was a second's margin. It's only seven tenths now, so definitely Van Orange is uh, suffering. So there, the uh, fantastic looking uh, Uckermann car. And there you can see the cars just absolutely sliding through the turn as the uh, power has put on just for a moment. And Orange then from Acris Motorsport has made his escape through the uh, chicane. And the uh, big muscly car of Van S right behind as they cross the timing line. Last time around, it was 1.081. Now it's uh, 0.989, so as close as close can be. The uh, Chevrolet Camaro uh, GT4 car from uh, V8 Racing trying to reel in uh, the leading number one machine, the BMW in three GT4. Bernhard van der Rons then in that car with uh, Ricardo van der Ender that will take over after the uh, mandatory pit stop, which comes up between uh, 20 and 30 minutes into the race. Here's the official window. All cars running with their lights on because of these uh, conditions. The exception of uh, car number 11. A message on the screen. The uh, Talaman uh, Sofia car motorsport car being told to turn its lights on. Whether it's done so or not. When we pick that car up on shot, we'll be able to see. So Bernhard uh, Van Arons then, just for the moment, has uh, got away from the um, from the charge of Van S scrap that because one of the things I just had to go off and research is the conflict of information that we've been having about who's driving what. The timing screen is displaying the wrong drivers in some cases. Oh, oh, so it is Ricardo van der Ender versus Duncan Hausman for the race lead rather than the co-drivers. And so thank you. We have one list from the organizers, we have one list from the timekeepers, I've gone to check and the screen is wrong, I'm told. So what we have from the GT4 series is correct and somewhere there's been a Glitch in getting the information across, so apologies. But so it's Van der Ender. Got, it is Van der Ender ahead of Hausman, and then in third place, it is Luke Davenport, which makes sense because he's quicker than David Patterson, and that car would have been dropping away by now. Right. The way that it works is that race one and qualifying one is for the pro to start, and Q2 and race two is for the am. And in some cases, the screen is right, in other cases, not, and that's why I'm starting to think, don't get this. Well, I'm glad so, you went and checked. So, for example, Simon Knapp is very much a pro, but therefore so ought to be Van der Ender and Hausman, and that's what we've now got, so apologies. Interestingly, now, Van der Ender is under investigation for that starting procedure. Well, I did say he was you a did. long way gone, yes. yeah, so I'm not entirely surprised about that. Uh, whether, of course, it was him, for example, jumping, or it was Hausman not being slow, yes. it's hard to gauge, actually. But, yes, you're right, he's being investigated. So let's reset and go with Van der Ender versus Hausman, two real stars of Dutch motorsport here coming up over the timing line. But uh, Luke Davenport is doing a very good job in third spot. Luke, yes. a couple of years ago, was here in the uh, G40 Championship and had a big shunt coming out of Blanchimont. He's got that out of his system. Mm. He goes over the timing line now, being chased by the Bulgarian driver, Pavel Lefterov. And in fact, Lefterov there in the Black Lotus, mm. right up behind him. And then the next little battle coming down to La Source is the... At BMW number 12 with Tristan Boersma at the wheel of it, and he in turn has got 69 Yellow Beelen catching up to him. But there's another little fight going on here. Look as the Chevron up the inside, Marcus Clutton goes through. Yeah, he does go through. That was a good move, set up perfectly. But uh, BMW fights back now. The BMW of uh, Lackinger and uh, Kasperling. But uh, well, that job is done. Car number 11 once again being warned about the lights being on. All the cars are having to run with the lights on because of the conditions. Yeah. The BMW back building up there, isn't it? As they head uphill. So the uh, Van der Ender leading car then being run by Tolman Motorsport. And um, there you
you can see just how the, the conditions are murky at other parts yeah. of the track. I mean, that's the spray hanging in the air, isn't it, under yeah. the trees? As up the inside there goes Jörg Vibar to try and get past the BMW in the hands of Dietmar Lackinger, but he couldn't do it. And they've got the Chevron and Marcus Clatton right up there with them. You made the point, Vibar, of course, is in a car that he's not used to, yeah, yeah, as such. Yeah. Yeah. And um, therefore, he's going to have to fight and fight very, very hard to get on terms uh, because, you know, the car that he is used to driving will recall from that... Uh, at uh, Spielberg, and there we can see in replay how that was uh, set up. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that was an effort made, and he realised it wasn't going to work. Now, the race leader, Ricardo van der Ender, has got a drive-through penalty for violation of Article 38.16. You don't need me to tell you what that is. It's all to do with the start. So, van der Ender, he's going to have to serve a pit stop. And it's a drive-through penalty, so that is going to cost him time. So the uh, race leading car then, uh, so once again v -Bahn just uh, lining up that car ahead of Lackinger. Still nothing doing, you can see the back end of v -Bahn's BMW there really stepping out. It was controlled, able to hold on to it. So drive through penalty for uh, our race leader. We continue to watch this uh, battle going on. This battle for P10, David. There's confirmation of that drive-through no. penalty. Which is unlike Ricardo van der Ender, in fairness. I mean, he's an experienced driver on the Formula 4 Festival in 1999, yeah. for example. He's done a lot of touring car and GT4 racing over the years. So you kind of expect him not to do things like that. Duncan Houseman running with him. The gap is 1.6 seconds, but it's a phony battle, really, because, of course, this car's going to have to give up the lead and serve that drive-through. So in this GT4 category, will Houseman have been made aware of the fact that van der Ende is ahead of him is going to have a drive-through penalty, therefore he can, he can afford almost to not battle too much. I mean, he'll have seen the board. Yeah, I think he would have had the message over the radio, yes, because he's on top of GT cars, a bit of a car communication. And if you look, he's actually fallen back a little bit now. He's kind and of I waiting for the moment. Yes, yeah. he's, he's decided, well, there's no point in this battle, is there? No, exactly. It's going to be interesting is to see where van der Ende feeds back in, how much time it's going to cost him, and, of course, therefore, what... Uh, Bernhard Van Oranje can do in the second stint of the race because Van Oranje is a quick amp. Mm -hmm. He lists himself by way of occupation these days as an entrepreneur, which is um, a, a good way of masquerading the fact that he's part of the Dutch royal family. Yes, yes, yes. Thomas Krebs there, look, gaining a place, and that puts him up ahead now of uh, Jose Luis Talamon in the sin. Feebar's on the charge again, the big BMW M3 heading up the hill. He's alongside Dietmar Lackinger. Now he's on the outside line. It really is horrible. Tristan uh, Boersma getting it wrong, sorry, wrong BMW, going up the escape road, but there he is, back on track. OK. Now, there's something about track limits and gaining an advantage there, but I'm not sure he did very much by uh, gaining ground, but that's what uh, slightly caught me out, the BM going off the road. So this was the, a replay of the V barn then, who uh, had just lined that car up, hadn't he, along that long Kemmel straight and uh, got the job done. Able to go through the... Uh, there with uh, no problem at all. So we've got the battle on for second, haven't we? We have now. Duncan Houseman is under real attack because he's got Luke Davenport up behind him. And Davenport is going great guns here in the Ginetta. And just as we, we came in here, you were saying Luke Davenport is going to potentially be one to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, Luke's one of those quick, underrated drivers. He does lots of, of UK racing in the Ginetta Championships. Uh, he's a bit of a Ginetta specialist. And he's a great enthusiast for racing a few years ago. As in to serve the drive through comes van der Henderson. This is now your lead battle. Uh, Houseman versus Davenport with also, of course, now uh, Lefteroff joining in as well. But as I was saying, Luke Davenport a few years ago came here with United Autosports just as a go for, you know, and got stuck in just to help out, just to sort of, you know, get his face known within GT Racing. And now he goes for the race lead into La Source, and Luke Davenport's got the inside line, and he's got the race lead. That is a very good move. And if you think about the 
CV of Duncan Houseman. He's just had one put over him by a relative newcomer to the sport. That's really good stuff. But now, look, the Yank Tank fights back going downhill. Absolutely dead set level on the inside line. is Houseman. He got to it. Davenport hangs onto the race lead. They climb uphill. Luke Davenport driving the race of his life here. This is great stuff. Davenport was not going to be thwarted by that, was he? He just shut the door and said, no way. But now, once again, this big, muscly Yang Tank, as you say, and now they're going through your breast, David. Houseman goes through, takes over the race lead. Lefter off comes up and gets second off Davenport. Is he going to get the lead off the Camaro? Yes, he is. He's found the grip on the outside line as well. Excellent move by Lefter off there. Outside line of the circuit in the wet is where you'll find more grip, and he teed that up absolutely fantastically. And so the Lotus Evora goes through into the lead. Davenport wants to try and come back at Houseman as they head down towards Brussel. He's got the inside line, but he can't quite do it there. Absolutely remarkable racing. This the battle for the lead that's going on, and it's Lefteroff oh. that's got it. And now Davenport gets P2, and the Yang Tank squirms and just gets out on the curve on opposite long. Cracky move by Luke Davenport, elbows out, and that Chevrolet is starting to struggle, isn't it? It's a lot more larry it's a lot more difficult and nervous whereas the two what you might call smaller gt cars are look a lot more stable don't they? they look a lot better balanced you're absolutely right there's no oh. question about it as he's trying to he's almost having to sail that through the corners isn't he look at that absolutely sideways I mean, it's great to watch but look how much time it's oh, losing it. indeed indeed that now left off is going to come under pressure isn't he as luke davenport wants that lead back again doesn't he and every single way he's going he's trying to find a way past so this is great racing for the lead side by side they head down now towards uh, campus past the educational building you can see on the inside of the circuit up towards the court full frere luke davenport looking for the line but left off defending well and left off is somebody who's only come out of karting into gt4 very recently so he's belying his lack of experience but what's good here is that you've got two young guns arguing over the race lead and all the so-called stars are trailing in their wake and even better news for us is that one of the leaders is a Brit. yes luke davenport then in the duo bat ginetta duo a company run by Alex Moss, himself a former Clubman's racer, British touring car racer, great enthusiast for racing Alex Moss. And the car then in second spot comes up now towards the bus stop chicane. But left her off in the Lotus. Turns right her off, then left her off. And up oh. the timing line at the end of lap six. Joke number 17 from the Addison joke book this weekend. And uh, remained <laughs> over the timing <laughs> line. The gap between the two is seven tenths of a second. But what's intriguing me really is the way the house and he's dropping back. Yes, he is dropping back, but then I think a good part of that is the fact that he is really having to try hard to drive that car. And, of course, conditions are improving. But Yala Bielan, who is in fourth in the other Camaro, is storming up the order. I mean, his last lap was a 254. Hausman's was a 259. Wow. So what is it that's, that's giving Hausman the problems here relative to Yala Bielan? Is it the way they've set the car up for the conditions? And Hausman is no dummy, so he's not down to him. He's fighting back. As they head uphill, it'll be interesting to see what the centre times are on this lap, because for my money, he's having another good go here. OK. Well, while that's all going on, of course, uh, Bielan is, as you rightly say, hauling them in as well. But every time they look, you know, as they come off the exit of that, you know, they are getting a bit... I mean, it's still slippery out there. Undoubtedly, the track conditions have improved since the start of this race, and we're, what, one and a half minutes away from the pit window opening. In the first sector, Houseman four tenths quicker than Luke Davenport, so he is coming back at him. Maybe it was just a rogue lap as he started to struggle, maybe found the worst parts of the conditions, but Houseman perhaps now is being able to drive around the problem. In the meantime, yes. Lefteroff is still being hounded. Um, and this battle is going to continue to rage, I fear, because Davenport wants to buy back into leading this race. The duo liveried car then that is P2 at the moment, absolutely hounding Lefteroff. Now, Lefteroff, of course, is doing the whole race. Yes. Davenport is doing part of the race. And he'll hand over to David Patterson, who isn't as quick. So with right. all due deference, that car is going to drop away so in the second needs, stint. He needs to, to, to get past, doesn't he? He does, but he also needs to pull away. And Lefteroff here is in the pound seat because the car is going to run at that pace for the remainder of the race. And don't forget that all the other cars, when they put the AM in, will have a difference in pace. Davenport, again, has a look for the race lead. The other one I think is going to be worth watching is, is, is Bielan and Marcel Nuren because they're pretty evenly matched. OK. So we continue to watch this uh, battle for the lead then. 
Just a quick word, Dave, also about Ricardo van der Ender because he's in fifth place after the drive-through, 13 and a half seconds back. The next lap that he does will be the first flying lap since the drive-through. So the sound will start to see what the pace is, yeah. Uh, please ignore some of the graphics that you see on screen because uh, my learned colleague alongside me has already checked and uh, the uh, timing screen and also the graphics sometimes on occasion are wrong in terms of the drivers that are actually in the cars. We do know that it's left or off in the car, that's for sure, but it's uh, uh, not Patterson that is uh, P2. It is, in fact, Luke Davenport who is driving that car. And doing a cracking job, I reckon. Indeed. Now, Hausman is in third place, look, in the Camaro. Last time he did a 2.59 and this lap... Tick, 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 a 2.55. So he's found four seconds from somewhere. <laughs> that was Just, an error, wasn't it? It makes me think that last time was a rogue. I mean, we saw him sliding. We yeah. saw the fact that he was having trouble. But Houseman now looks like he's driving around the problem. Right. He's not as quick as the two leaders. He's still losing time. Yes. But he's getting closer to the pace he needs to be doing. What's also going to be worth factoring into this is if pro drivers like him are struggling with the conditions. What are the AM drivers going to... Absolutely right. Stand by with the parts order book. Okay, left or off leads. Davenport, P2. Now, there was our points leader. The pit window has been open now for just over a minute. And here, this uh, fantastic little uh, sin car. There's a road going one of these yeah. in the paddock. And were it not for the fact I don't think I'd get in it, I would like one of those. They're a fantastic looking car. V8 as into the pit lane comes number 16, which is the KTM Uckerman. of Daniel Uckerman who had a win, didn't he, early yes. on in the season. Uckerman Pitts, he's the first one to serve that stop. Yeah, quick word about the Sin. It's a V8 Chevrolet 6.2-litre engine. It kicks out 444 brake horsepower. It's quite a bit of kit, that. That is quite a bit of kit. You can't get much shopping in it, but who cares if you <laughs> want a car like that? Room you don't go shopping, do you? Room for my sandwiches. Room for your <laughs> sandwiches and nothing else. <laughs> yes, not even for you, but the sandwiches. <laughs> now, the lead back Come on. still absolutely knows to tail. Luke Davenport has tried everything except fling the car over the top. <laughs> Pressure being applied to Lefteroff now as they come down through Paul. Do you know what I'm really impressed with here? It's Lefteroff. He's denying him every opportunity. Absolutely. The defence has been supreme. Yeah. I think Davenport is unquestionably quicker, but Lefteroff has just thwarted every possible opportunity that Davenport has uh, tried to get past that car. Two British marks as well here. Fighting yes. it out for the race lead, Lotus versus Ginetta. Ginetta's still a bit of a hidden gem in many senses because it's been going now for uh, over 55 years and uh, it is a constructor that does make road cars in very very small number but uh, has a very very busy life making race cars the g40s for the junior and the senior championship the g55s again for the one make super cup or in gt4 trim and this is a car that races uh, in the British GT Championship. You see the BRFCC badge on the side, part of the regulation for British GT. And so through Blanchiment, the Lotus there just gapped by two lengths. But left or off leads up to the bus stop. Luke Davenport sets the car up. Is there going to be a gap on the inside? There is a gap, but he commits a bit late. That's all a bit tentative, Luke. He almost put himself in trouble there because he didn't really commit. Whoa, left or off sure. swings across the front into the pit lane he comes. So Luke Davenport takes over the race lead. Left or off now serves the mandatory stop. Why is Davenport staying out? It's because he is quicker than his co-driver and needs to stay out for as long as possible. Absolutely. Every single lap he needs to do now must be a quali lap for him to get the advantage that he needs to pass over to the slower driver. So Davenport, every single one, he bangs in now. And what have we got? Uh, quite a few minutes left before he has to dive in and Patterson will take over but there is Lefteroff in the uh, pit lane now now this was this was a, a skitty move really by Luke it, it, it was a bit half-hearted it was should I shouldn't I should I shouldn't I and when he realized he shouldn't it was a good job he didn't yes he's been up alongside truth it all grief there but yes left off for the pit lane and there he is tire pressures are checked it is a 90 second pit stop unless you change tires in which case it's 125 seconds why is it a different time it's because some cars have six wheel nuts and others just have one central bolt so left or off one of those drivers then who is doing the entire race one of the uh, five drivers that's doing the entire race and uh, well it, it, it's busy, it is now? a busy place now yeah so Davenport staying out there, we saw, of course. Also, just to mention that Hausmer's come in to give way to Sandor Van S. 28 there is in, uh, which is Dietmar Lackinger to hand over to Dietmar Lackinger because he will stay in the car. Now that he's a soloist, Jan Kasperlik soloist. not taking part. Absolutely. 
but who else did we have in this time? We also had Jose Luis Talaman in, in the sin. So it's another four that have served their pit stops. The pit window opens only for 10 minutes, and around here, that doesn't give you that much time. No, that's, it doesn't. That's Rob Sever getting ready to take over from Simon Knapp, the BMW dealer, standing by. Thinking, where's my car then? Yes, come on. Yeah. And while he's waiting, he says to everybody else, and I can do you a good deal on a one series. I've got a <laughs> lovely one, just come in, you know. Oh, yeah, well owned. Yeah, never raced or rallied. Right, that's Lacking that's set to go. And there is the new race leader, Luke Davenport, then. He has led the race briefly earlier on, but he's been gifted it because of the pit stops. What he's got to do now is two, possibly three qualifying laps. I think he can only get two in, actually. Right. <laughs> Track conditions still not nice they're neither wet nor dry now and therefore it remains a problem for the drivers to know exactly how to push and it will remain a problem for the co-drivers on their first couple of laps because they have absolutely it's, no data yeah, it's going to be unfamiliar to yeah. them isn't it you know co-driver might say careful at pull on it's a bit slippery for example but until they've actually committed to the corner they don't know how slippery that's a fair point okay so we're watching uh, our race leader who has yet to pit and uh, Luke Davenport, we think, is going to stay out for as long as possible, and we're wrong. <laughs> Was it ever thus, David? Uh, in, in your defence for that sentence, there is a difference as well between being a quick driver going for a lap time and the co-driver that pays the bills. Fair and point. It's, it is important that one's co-driver gets ample track time. <laughs> as much racing as possible. Yes. So, David Patterson, <laughs> where is he? There he is. Uh, moves forward, ready to hop into the car. <clears throat> And uh, Luke Davenport. A difference out. between them physically, isn't there as well? Uh, yes. Which actually, in these weather conditions, <laughs> who am I? <laughs> Hello, Pot. <laughs> how dare I? <laughs> but well, the point I was going to try and make is that actually, in these damn conditions, sometimes to have a bit of ballast is useful, isn't it? <laughs> With due apologies to Patterson. <laughs> oh, shut up. In the I'm meantime, my code. Yes, uh, we I think have pretty much cycled through most stops. There are a couple that are staying out there. Uh, Tristan Boersma hasn't yet come in to give way to Yorick Boersma. Bivan is in now. Is he? He's another one who's not going to be getting out of a seat. No, because he's another solo. <laughs> the other one that stayed out is Sasha Halleck, who has not yet given over to Peter Ebner, but should do soon. Right, the leader is in. Oh, yes, we doubted that, haven't we? Sorry, yes, because we remarked upon David Patterson. So set to go is David. As soon as the uh, 90 seconds are done. And where will the car feed in relative to Lefterov? We've got Borsma taking over the race lead, incidentally, now ahead of uh, Peter Ebner, because they've yet to stop. So it's a phony situation. What you really need to factor in is Marcel Nuren in 69, because that is the car that has made a stop. And look here for the lead. Lefterov will come through La Source. David Patterson is on the inside. This is going to be close, but he can't cross the white line. Careful, 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 David. He gets it right. And into the lead goes the Ginetta. Just and only briefly, because now Lefterov hoofs it up the run past the pits, and he goes through, takes over the race lead. So the status quo there it is once more in the right order. You've got Lefterov then ahead of David Patterson, but I fear that lead is going to grow on this lap. Other things to look for then now, going to be the pace of Marcel Nuren yes. in 69. All along, you said that Davenport was going to be the quicker driver to uh, Patterson, so uh, left her off then should be able to increase that margin between the P1 and P2 car. And then we have a big Chevrolet battle behind. And it is Nuren just fighting onto the back of... Sandor Van Es. Now, I have a horrible feeling here that Van Es, after the pit stop, has lost a lap. Need to check this, but that car, for my money, is a long, long way down the order now. Right. And the timing screen, either there is a glitch or, or 96 had a long stop, which would tally with the fact that the car was losing pace before the pit yes. stops, if you're with me. And they, we didn't see it, but it might have been that they had to keep it in and do some work on it. So let me, let me come back. Uh, on that at the end of the lap. Now, Jörg Vibarn is under investigation for speeding in the pit lane, Dave. Oh, well, uh, that will be a uh, that will be a penalty if that's proven to be the case. It is only under investigation at the moment as we see Vibarn now very, very closer to that uh, number 18 car. Around the outside of Carsten Struther. I think he's fresh into the stint, isn't he? Yes. 
I'll tell you what, I do like the GT4 version of the 911. It's a nice shape. It's almost like the Cayman, isn't it? No, it, it, it is a bit, yes. Because it's not got all the flared wheel arches like a GT3 spec car has. It's a much more standard car. I just think it looks really nice. Uh, in finally comes Tristan uh, Boersma to give way to Yorick Boersma. So it's another of the BMW M3s for NMT Racing. Tristan out. Yorick in. Car burbles away, but the pit window is closed, so they got it in in Only time. Only just. They got it in in time, but uh, really stretching that to the very end of the window, weren't they? And just that the, sometimes, when you are so close and the margins are that close, can go horribly wrong for you. Yeah, you can. only need one mistake, and especially on a long lap like this as well, mm. it's even harder to control. So 90 seconds, even though the car was well placed, you had the 90 second pit stop time on and it dropped back. The leader has just gone through. Now, we haven't yet had Peter Ebner into the pit lane in 15. So the window is closed and number 15, which is uh, the Sasha Halleck Peter Ebner car, Halleck at the wheel, I should say, has not yet pitted, or has not been credited with a pit stop. So that car is in stride. That's going to be a penalty for not serving the pit stop. Away goes the BMW. Right. The timing screen, I think, had had a glitch over the 96 Camaro. Okay. And Lefter off has gone through, but we haven't yet had the Ginetta classified on the screen. So I think something is going wrong in the system somewhere. Uh, we'll come back to the race order. The track is definitely drying out because we've just had a personal best lap by uh, Lefter off. There you can see is the number 15, Sasha Halleck. Uh, KTM crossbow. The KTMs, when they first came into GT4 racing, were slightly odd looking open top cars. Yes. But I think the fact they made them into closed ones helps the general concept because people thought, why do we have these open top, almost glorified kit cars, really? They look a bit odd. This, as a proper sports car with a top, I think it helps the image and it looks good. There is a pit stop violation penalty given to 28, which is Dietmar Lackinger. And it's a one second stop and go penalty. So, in other words, he was one second short on the say, pit that, stop. That meant that he didn't serve the time by yeah. one second out. So, and of course, now what he gets is. Uh and uh, now, uh, V-Barn is getting a uh, drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Okay, and here, look, now, is Peter Ebner too late? Well, yeah, exactly. You, you asked earlier on about pits to car communication <laughs> you, you, you get it's got to work some, hasn't it? some teams do and some teams don't but a lap late in comes the sim and what that means now is that that car is going to end up not only doing this pit stop and losing the 90 seconds that it will take the regulation time but there's going to be a penalty applied afterwards as well well and, and is that not just an unforgivable error david yes and it's a collective error it's down to the team it's down to the man in the car there should be better communication all round and there's going to be a bit of a discussion now as well because they're going to go through the... Oh, I like that. Uh, interesting way of getting the doors open. Just sort of sling the roof out. That's clever. Um, th there's going to be a discussion here. They're going to go through the motions of this pit stop because they have to, but they know as they're doing it that there's little point because they're going to get another penalty and lose lots of places. So it's, it's a soul-destroying situation now for Peter Ebner getting into the car. Yes, because whatever he does, however good he is in the second half of this race. It's going to count as noise. Yeah, I mean, the only thing he can pray for now is that whatever the penalty is, if it's a, a, a stop-go or a, 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 another drive-through, say, yeah. and I'll research the regs in a moment, the only thing he can hope for is that he can get that penalty out of the way and then there's a safety car that will bring him back onto the tail. Yes. But that's what he needs. There he is. Of course, only uh, 16 minutes or so plus one lap to do. But uh, never say never. Of course, now he has to... Uh, Wait for the allotted time. Now, as I mentioned, Beamer, who's currently running P9, is going to get a uh, drive through penalty. Uh, we mentioned the uh, warning that had been shown. It is for speeding in the uh, pit lane. So, uh, Sasha Halleck then. He gives us the thumbs up, but uh, clearly he won't be thinking that actually because of the. Uh, mix up there in terms of uh, when to come in and uh, carry out that uh, pit stop stay with that shot for a moment pass is on and uh, Ebner in the car now
Here comes the uh, stop-go penalty for car number 28. Lackinger then, one second. But of course, it's not only one second because it's pit in, it's pit out as well. So that is a uh, costly penalty all for the fact that they actually got the mandatory uh, pit stop time wrong and didn't stay in the uh, pit box for one second. I mean, it's, it's a big price to pay, isn't it, for a mistake of one second? Yes, indeed. I can remember being at a Lamborghini Super Trofeo race a few years ago and somebody got a 0.3 of a second stop-go penalty because that was how short the pit stop was. And not only was 0.3 of a second virtually impossible for a stop go, what made it worse was you then stalled. Oh, no. <laughs> and the whole thing just became a complete catalogue of errors. Uh, the pit stop for number 15 is under investigation, largely right. because it happened after the window had closed, so you can understand why uh, there's going to be an investigation. And so left her off then is the race leader, but behind, it is an absolutely enormous advantage. Now, I think that... David Patterson has had a moment somewhere because he's lost chunks of time. Right. And the situation that we now have is that Lefteroff is 58 seconds up on Sandor Van Es, but the Ginetta is back in fourth place and it came out with the race right, leader. Absolutely. So I know David Patterson's lap times aren't going to be as quick, but I'm trying to get my head around what's happened. And of course, because we've been looking at different things, we've not been able to keep a, a complete handle on the true situation. So Lefter off has gone by. And there, look, coming out of the chicane, in second spot now is the Camaro, which goes across the line. Now, that's more like it. That's Sandor Van Es, who is 16 seconds back. Right. So that makes sense. But and where then, is the... Yeah. Then in third place, that should be 69, Marcel Nuren, yes. In fourth place is the number one BMW of Bernhard van Oranje, tick. And then in fifth place, there is the yellow KTM. And sixth is David Patterson. So he's had an off, do you think? He must have had an off to lose all that time. I think he's had an off that we haven't seen. Right, so yes, I'm, I'm happy now with the way the classification is being shown. There was for a lap, I think, a, a, a glitch somewhere. They've lost a lap from the uh, Sandor Van Es Duncan Houseman Camaro. But anyway, that's now been sorted out. Thank you, Swiss Timing. And 16 seconds is the advantage that the leader has. But significantly, Lefteroff is still lapping four seconds a lap quicker than Van Es. Which is an extraordinary difference, isn't it? Well, absolutely. And also, it means that he's going to be uncatchable because nobody else is doing lap times anything like those of the leader. That's Carsten Struve coming back in. And that's for his stop-go penalty. Yes, that's the one-second stop-go. The only other person that's doing anything good in terms of lap times is Daniel Luckerman, okay. who was the first one to pit. Yes. But he's doing personal bests, but they're still not as good as the overall race leader, and yeah, he's still 49 seconds back anyway. His personal best is a 254.5 versus well, we got 252.7. Yeah, which isn't his best. No. Off. So even one driver's best is not as good. A two minute, 31 second stop go penalty for number 15, Peter Ebner. So it's uh, two and a half minutes. Okay. Article 21.8, pit stop violation. Well, stopping outside the window <laughs> is clearly a violation. Absolutely, it's as simple as it can be. And as you made the point, it's a massive error on the part of the team to not get it uh, right. So the car will have to serve the pit stop that it should have made, plus a penalty. We watch our race leader, left off then, who is incredibly quick and has got that absolutely sorted in terms of uh, knowing exactly where the grip is. Now, this is where the advantage is of perhaps just one driver, of course, being in the car because uh, as he sets the fastest lap at 252.215, the ASC Bolafto Racing driver. What? You know, he has got so much experience because he has coped with the whole race and the changing conditions and every single lap he knows where to put the car. And therefore, that's you know part of the reason why his lap times are supreme in comparison to the rest of the pack. Well, that was David Patterson still coming up for attack. That's Ukinger, isn't it, who's gone up behind him. Yes. Uh, just to go back to the Peter Ebner uh, KTM, the stop-go penalty is of the equivalent time outside the scheduled time. 
So however much you miss it by, plus the pit stop. Ooh. So that's why... That, that's quite a heavy penalty, yeah, isn't it? That's why it comes up to two and a half minutes. Right, the leading gap is 16.9 seconds. Here comes Ucking around the outside of David Patterson. The KTM has the line, has the traction, and has the place. Runs a little bit deep into the bus stop. And now David Patterson is under attack. Is that Rob Severs? No, it's not. It is uh, Yorick Bosma's BMW that slides its way up out of the chicane. And they come over the timing line absolutely together. But uh, David Patterson, who with all due respect to him, is an am, is now being monstered by more experienced drivers around him. And he's dropping down the order and leaves the door open there, going into La Source, that breaks himself a little bit, went deep into the corner. But these are tricky conditions, but I suspect you'll find David a bit nearer the pace in race two when he's got a bit more track experience under his belt. Fair point. So nine and a half minutes plus one lap are on the clock, and it is still up front, then Pavel Leftorov, whose lap times are starting to go up. They're becoming comparable with Sandor Van Es behind him, but Van Es is not yet quicker, so the gap's not coming down. Yes, because the gap between left or off, uh, Van Es is, what, just under 17 seconds? Indeed so. Interesting replay. Absolutely right. Um, basically quick these GT4 cars. <laughs> right, now there's 12, which is Yorick Borsma pressing on with life. I'm also a bit mystified about number eight, because I know we saw Simon Canap have that moment when he had to take evasive action on the first lap, but the car never really recovered from that, did it? It's never got the places back, and now Rob Sever, sideways Sever, is in ninth spot. He's all over the back of David Patterson, but that car has never really worked its way up the order in the way I would have anticipated. No, maybe not. And he's actually making heavy weather of getting past the That's Ginetta, well, When we've seen the uh, Ginetta past, uh, by other cars, it has been uh, fairly, fairly uh, quickly done. But uh, you're quite right; he's making heavy weather of this, isn't he? And Rob said there, he's not in experience. He lines up to go on the inside of Puan, and he goes through. But yes, it's taken him a while to pull that pass. Anyway, he's gone through now. Up into eighth place is the number eight BMW. And so David Patterson drops down the order. But up front, Pavel Lefterov leads the way and is looking, of course, for his first victory of the season. Mm. And to win it in style, it's going to be mighty impressive. He's just gone across the line now. And if you consider that the Lotus and the Ginetta were level after the Ginetta's pit stop, yes. the Lotus has just gone across the line. He's about a third of a lap up now Which on is David Patterson. An incredible margin, isn't yeah. it? David's lap times. Do you know, I'm not as convinced he did have an off. The more I look at the lap time, the you more think I think it's just losing time, yeah. Right. Because his last one was a three minutes eight, and you can see that he's just not as comfortable in that car as Luke Davenport was. And so I think we may have uh, guessed wrong by saying that it was an off, because the lap times are consistently a good deal away from the others around him. Now, number 15, not only does it have to serve this two and a half minute stop go, but it hasn't done so yet. And it has to do that within three laps of notification. Indeed so. Well, I should think they'll have the sandwiches ready, won't they? Because two minutes 31, he can have a coffee, a sandwich, and... Absolutely, yeah. A laugh while he's here. <laughs> so, <laughs> over the timing line goes number 12 BMW, which is, as I say, Yorick Boersman out the wheel of the NMT Racing M3. Makes a good noise, that car, as it uh, plunges downhill. Now, Jörg Vibar, who I have to say, doesn't look happy in a BMW compared to an Aston Martin is uh, the next man to try and do something about David Patterson and he gets it all wrong going into La Source. I suspect after the Red Bull ring, Jörg Vibarn's just glad to be on terra firma, isn't he? Yeah, just looking at uh, Vibarn's lap and comparing that to the uh, Patterson lap and yeah. it's Patterson that he's, he's up against. He's going to be on him, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's 10 seconds a lap quicker, give or take three tenths. Even in a car that he's uncomfortable. That, precisely, yes. Uh, so by the end of this next lap, v should be through. Your v another experienced peddler, uh, racing the VLN, for example, for quite a few seasons. There is the KTM of Daniel Lookinger. I have to say, I like the new style with the closed roof, and uh, Daniel Lookinger is going strongly in that car. He's a regular in the 24-hour series, in the Barcelona events, the Zandvoort, the Paul Ricard, the Dubai races, and Daniel Lookinger turning his way out of Bruxelles now, heads off downhill in the Austrian-built KTM. Puts a wheel up onto the kerb there. Ruckerman in sixth spot, you can see, in the Zabotech Sport car now. So, five and a half minutes remain. Lead gap is going up once again. Yes. Uckinger is one of those, actually, who is bringing his lap times down, but he's too far behind everybody to really take effect now. Yes. 
And what have we got left? Uh, five and a half minutes plus one lap. Yeah. So uh, it is uh, Daniel Luckerman then that the, we watch. And I have to say, the machinery in uh, the GT4 European Series is varied. And uh, I think that is one of the uh, better looking cars in that series. The, the series has always had bags of potential. I remember being at Silverstone for its first ever race many, many years ago when SRO was running it. And it's always had variety and it's always had the potential. And for whatever reason, it's never quite clicked. And it's a shame because there are lots of cars around. And if you think these days about how many people drive a sports car on the road, the market has really boomed in recent years. Yes. It's got away from hot hatches. There are more smaller sports cars that are all el eligible for this, but it just hasn't, for some reason, caught the imagination. And partly, I think, it's because GT3 is so popular that so many people want to go and race in that. And GT4's sometimes considered a bit the poor relation, but it gives good grids, and it's a good way of going racing. You get lots of track time in this. You can have two drivers and split the costs. Yes. It's a shame more people don't come and do it, because all the potential is there. It's a series I really wish would have more success. Now, Bernhard van Oranje here is under pressure from Peter Ebner, but so what? because Ebner's Ebner is still not panicking. and I really thought Ebner was going to come in that time but yeah. it... and again you see now he slows right down as he comes down the hill this takes you back to whatever the problems are with communication in that team because they should have got him in by now to get this penalty out of the way and he's still driving round and he's getting involved in battles that he doesn't need to be because they're not going to help him why is he not in the pit lane and I think this is the last lap before he will get another penalty for not serving that penalty if he doesn't come in this time. I might be wrong, but I think so. I think you're probably right. But the penalty is there on the timing screen for us to see and for the teams to see. And if for the teams to communicate. Precisely. So unless there is a problem of getting information into the car, which is why the pit stop was late, that's possible, then that starts to tally. But if that's the case, the team needs to be leaning over the pit wall with the board and waving him in. Yes. And, and, and putting the urgency into this. I mean, now, in fairness to uh, Peter Ebner, he's fighting back. But it does make you think that they can't communicate with the car because you've got different drivers, both in a situation that's similar, haven't you? Because Halleck missed the pit stop. Yes. He was oblivious. And seemingly Ebner is not coming in because he's, he's oblivious. Yes. yes, I think you're right. So the one constant is the communication here. In fairness, it's got pace, that car, because look at the way it's caught back up onto the back of uh, Van Oranje's BMW here. Yes, the Acres BMW ahead is unquestionably being caught. But as you said right at the start of that sentence, that, you know, it's a futile battle, really. Mm. Unless, of course, Edna is completely and totally unaware of the fact that he should be in to uh, stop for lunch. Well, precisely. Uh, but he's going to end up at this rate having to have that converted into a post-race time penalty added on. Now, will that, the post-race penalty surely will be more severe? Should be. Ooh, big slide by Van Oranje. And that puts Ebner up alongside him. It's through. Uh, yeah, and Van Oranje lets him go. But you see, if those two had made contact there, <sighs> that car needs to be in the pit lane. We'll see what happens at the end of this lap. And the biggest frustration of all is that Ebner is actually going very strongly in that. You know, look, the pace is good. He's caught, he's passed, he's pulled away. There's nothing wrong with the potential and the, and the speed of that car, but its race is compromised by these pit stop errors. Yes. Well, there'll be a big uh, talking to in the uh, garages, I would think, before yeah. race two later this afternoon. As all the banner on your car runs really, really wide there. I mean, that car now, the number one BMW, has just dropped into fifth place. But don't forget, that's had to make two pit stops because it got the drive through earlier yes. on, didn't it? Because of Van der Ender's jump start. But Missed it again. Well, I think... Uh, right, so there's this lap and one... Well, there's this lap and one more if you look at the time, but it depends where left off is on the circuit relative to the clock, actually, so... Yes, because everything is... It will be... Based uh, on the leaders. Uh, based yeah. on, on left off. Yeah. So but I think he's now missed the opportunity to go in. I think... He could come in, but he wouldn't be able to get out again. Yes, if he comes there wouldn't be time with them. Exactly. If he comes in at the end of this lap... You see, there is the race leader, and Lefterov is coming out of Le Con. Yes, so he's going to start his last lap this time. So if um, Ebma came in at the end of this lap, the yeah. race would finish with him in the pit lane. Anyway, let's look at the positives. For my money, Pavel Lefterov here has done an absolutely cracking job. He's yes, not he put has. a wheel wrong, he's raced hard, he's raced fair, and he's going to give the Lotus Evora an overdue GT4 win. And it's good because it's another mark and it's another driver adding names to 
a pretty varied winners list already this year no one team no one car no one driver has got anything like domination no which reinforces the fact that it is it's gr it's a great series isn't mm. it all the potential is there and gt4 in the uk for example is finally growing in terms of entries it's very popular in holland because there's no gt3 and so if you want to go gt racing gt4 is for you the costs are less and on the back of that gt4 dutch series the european series was rejuvenated mm -hmm. with the dutch teams uh, and it's also interesting that you've got the bulgarians you've got british teams coming in as well so you know it, it is a, a genuinely credible series well worth looking at goes to nice venues lots of track time decent value for money come and have a go left off i reckon has lifted on this lap because he knows he's so far ahead of the opposition he can just coast this to the flag he will start the last lap this time so Pavel Leftorov then, who has driven a uh, sterling race, that's for sure, will, as David has said, start his uh, last lap. I'm now absolutely convinced that the Ebner Halleck car is lacking in communication between the team and the drivers. So as that uh, beautiful car goes through the chicane. And heads up towards the timing line. Final lap now. Left or off. Heading towards first win of the campaign in the GT4 European Series. And I think you're right. I think he has lifted. I think he realizes yeah. that he's, you know, in a comfort zone, isn't he? Absolutely. And right. there's, there's, there's no point trying to be a hero now no. and go for the fastest lap. He's already got it. Yes. Just bring it home. You know, the race is his. He has just done though a very slow lap because that was a three minutes three the gap that was 16 seconds has come down to eight and into the pits comes Peter Edler well I was wrong presumably that was the last of the three laps that he had to you know he had to be in within finally he's come in I mean whether he's going to be able to go back out again is a moot point I don't think he is is he I wouldn't have thought so so What's intriguing me is this gap. It's halved. And I was saying that Leftrov was stroking it home. I think he's got a problem. I don't know. He's, he's either very, very cautious or he's low on fuel. But it's a wet track. He shouldn't be low on fuel. No. It sounds subdued, but it could be as simple as just short shifting. Let's have another listen when we get a, 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 a section of the circuit where he's on the power. Not here, because it'll be a trailing throttle around Brussels. Downhill. sounds pretty gentle to me and you know look in the background that second place Camaro is getting closer absolutely no argument about it and left her off if he is just coasting home and being cautious just needs to look to his mirrors here because in the first sector he's lost one second mm -hmm. he's coming down I don't think that Van S is going to get there in time but he was certainly within shot wasn't he oh, absolutely right I mean as I say halved in the lap from 16 down to eight seconds you would just start to be a little bit fretful about this if you were the team. But, you know, I, know I think he's all right, but he is certainly at a reduced pace here. And it might be, as I say, that he's just... He knows he's got something in reserve. If that Chevrolet does get much closer, he can speed away again. But it just doesn't seem to pick up very well going through core Paul Frey, does it? That doesn't look like a car that's been a dominant race leader. Mm. In the middle sector... He's actually quicker, <laughs> so I'll take it all back. He's, he's OK. Um, he is being ever so cautious, <laughs> driving within himself. They're onto dessert now. Yes, quite. Yes. <laughs> Peter Ebner has downloaded another book for his Kindle, and he'll be away in a bit. It's up to chapter three of War and Peace. Into the chicane, then, comes Papa left her off. He's not going out again, is he? I mean, no, no. But the Lotus is going to score a victory. Papa left her off. Works his way up towards the line, and Pavel Leftorov wins race one of the competition 102 GT4 European Series. He comes across the line victorious, and second place in the background for Sandor Van Es and Duncan Hausman. The gap at the end was right down 8.3 seconds, and uh, they'll, as the KTM does get away, but only to come out of the pits and get a part of Fermi. Uh, there'll be all the news about that race and therefore whether there was any drama for left or off on the series website. And also there's an app for the championship available for all Apple devices. So you can download the free app if you so desire and uh, 
all the news and the results will be on there. Race two comes up later on in the day, incidentally, as across the line for third place, it is uh, Marcel Murad and Yellow Beal. And from the back of the grid, don't forget that. Fourth is Daniel Uckinger, and fifth, Bernhard van Oranje and Ricardo van der Ender. It is a shame there are no more than 14 cars here this weekend to race in this, but it's a series that you can't help but like. And even with 14 cars, we've had some we've had some great races. Absolutely. And a lot to talk about. Track conditions help in a situation like that, where it's greasy and things happen. Uh, but a stirring sight at the beginning with the Chevrolets and the BMs all sideways. But an excellent job. First win, don't forget. First ever win for Pavel Lefteroff in a car race. Cracking job done. And one of the most daunting circuits. I mean, I hope we see more of him in more GT races. Mm. Because the potential is there. You can see that Lefteroff is well chuffed. Trying to get out and celebrate even before the car stops. <laughs> team uh... it fascinates me that a Bulgarian squad wants a British car well, it shows the Lotus name yes. is uh, still a charismatic one <laughs> so let's have a look at the top three then because third place up from the back of the grid after problems on the warming up lap Yella Bielan started and Marcel Nuren brought it home it being the V8 racing Chevrolet Camaro similar car second round of the same team Duncan Houseman started it Sandor Van Es brought it home but ahead of the big bruisers was the little Lotus. The Evora comes home victorious, and soloist Pavel Lefteroff does a great job in the ASC Bolavto racing car. His winning margin, 8.3 seconds. A job very well done indeed. And we will see him out of the car in just a few moments and head up towards the uh, podium. Pavel Lefteroff being told to uh, come a little bit further forward. <laughs> very British pit lane because you've got a GT3 Bentley there from the ADAC GT Milesons in the background and the Lotus there is Papa left her off out he gets when was the last time the Bulgarian national anthem was played at Spa, well or they're, indeed they're, anywhere they're, they're searching to download it now yeah, I suspect yes. um, I was just thinking about that Evora and the last time I um, the last time I uh, uh, saw one of those um, doing as well as that was at the hands of Gavin Kershaw mm. Yeah, Lotus Gavin. employee that... Uh, That's right. Former Superstocks racer, oval racer, very That's quick right. in, uh, in British GT racing, Gavin Kershaw, you're quite right. So, out of the car has got Pavel Lefter off. Sandor Van Es will be there and Marcel Nuren will be there and they'll make their way up onto the podium very shortly. Ceremony will be delayed whilst the orchestra learn the Bulgarian <laughs> national anthem, David. <laughs> doesn't help to do it for the winning team either, does it, at this instance? So. <laughs> <laughs> but joking apart, a really good job that. Excellent job, well done. And it's nice as well that the car runs in the pseudo uh, JPS yes. uh, colours. Still synonymous with Lotus. And Pavel left her off. Needs a bit of encouragement to go to the podium. There's nobody from the series, I don't think, there to sort of jolly him along. But uh, his first win, he doesn't really know what to do now. No. <laughs> Well done. That was really good. It was really good. Can't argue with that. I've seen a bit more of him, you know. Yes, I think you're probably right. And the team absolutely delighted. <laughs> so hopefully they will be to the podium in a few moments' time. But uh, as I say, there's nobody from the championship orchestrating all of this, so it might well be that uh, this is where the celebrations are taking place. Well, the <laughs> family well pleased. They're jolly pleased. Yeah, Pavel moving up from karting. And the Competition 102 GT4 European Series has a second race later on in the day. I suspect by then the track is going to be dry and it could well be a very different type of race mm. because on a dry circuit you'd think that the more powerful Chevrolets would have a bigger advantage. Well, Those conditions I think could have played right I mean, into the hands of Pavel. I think for the... Sh for the Chevys to, to achieve P2 and P3 in challenging conditions like that yeah. uh, is, is mighty impressive. So, uh, well, it's yeah. drying, but I don't know if I would... The road is drying, says Marcel Nuren. Mm. Here's a confirmation of the result then. Left her off taking the win. Van S. Heisman, uh, P2. Bielen, Nuren, three. Uckerman, four. Van Orange and Van der Ender, P5. Boosma, 
P6 then Knapp and Severs P7 with V Barn taking P8 and Patterson Davenport P9 Cluton and uh, Schofield taking uh, P10. So those are the results after 18 laps and uh, another race to come a little bit later when. Uh, as David has indicated, track conditions potentially could be very different to those that we see at the moment. So uh, the GT4 European Series race one is uh, done. And uh, no uh, hurry to look at uh, the command there. Certainly no hurry to get up to the uh, podium. And uh, it's such a packed schedule of events this weekend. Single seater uh, Formula 3s now on track already. They will be up next. Uh, Daniel Lookerman then heads up 